Over the last 12 months, I've tried every single pickleball drill that I've come across. And I've come to the conclusion that there are really only three drills that you'll ever need. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, focusing on these three drills will help you improve the fast. In this video, we'll walk through why it's so critical to drill if you wanna get better at pickleball. All three of the drills that I alluded to in the intro. And we'll put them all together into what a typical drilling session might look like. And what's more, I'll share a way to make these drills even better. An unusual way to modify them that I see a lot of pros doing, but I haven't seen shared anywhere on YouTube yet. You're gonna love it. Let's get into it. Why drill in the first place? Well, if you're like me and you wanna get better at pickleball and you'd rather do it faster than slower, then drilling's essential. To get decent at pickleball, you need to be able to do two things reliably. One, get to the kitchen, and two, play consistently at the kitchen. And in order to do that, you need to be able to trust your shots, like your third shot drops, your dinks, your block follies, and so on. I don't trust you. And the only way you can trust your shots and develop them is if you get a lot of reps in. And the best way to get reps is drilling, because you're gonna hit those shots five, 10, maybe even 20 times more frequently per hour than if you're playing games. So it should come as no surprise that pros like Ben Jong spent almost all of their time on court drilling and almost none of their time playing. That all out of the way, let's get into the first drill, the transition drill. The transition drill is the most important drill because it helps you get into the kitchen. And if you're a player that's at the four five or below level, this is probably where I spend most of my time. And when I was going from four zero to four five, this is where I spent most of my time. And the reason is it gets you comfortable with third shot drops and drives, fifth shot drops and resets, seven shots if it's required and helps you get into the habit of getting up to the kitchen so you can try to win the point once you're up at the kitchen. So here's how it works. You'll have one player up and one player back, and then you just play out point. The one caveat that I would point out is at lower levels, you might be able to get away with winning the point without getting to the kitchen by hitting a bunch of drives or swinging hard at volleys while you're in transition. But I'd encourage you to try to focus on getting to the kitchen before trying to win the point because that's a skill you're gonna need once you ascend to the four, five, five, oh, five, oh plus levels. It's not likely that you're gonna be able to force an error from a higher level player if you're not at the kitchen. So this is a great drill head on, and you can also do a cross court as well, but the kitchen battle after you get up to the kitchen is a little less realistic, so I prefer to spend most of my time just doing half court straight on. So yeah, that's the transition drill. There are lots of variants on it. You can pick whichever one you like, as long as you are getting a lot of reps in of getting to the kitchen. Oh, remember when I said that there was a way to punch up these drills to make them even better? Well, here it is. Instead of doing it with two people, do it with three. The reason why it's better is when the isolated person, in this case, the person trying to get to the kitchen, comes up, they can play to the whole court because there are two people on the other side. And this more closely mimics a real game situation where you'd probably be dropping cross court more often than not. And um, yeah, it's just better, which is funny to me because when I was starting out, I would be really disappointed when I heard we only had three people. I felt like drilling was for two people and games were for four, so three was just this weird, weird number and I never wanted it to be three. Now I'm a little disappointed if we have two or four because three person drills are the best and that's my favorite way to put pickleball right now. So try it out. You'll be surprised at how great they are. Onto the second drill, the kitchen drill. This is the most important drill to add when you're transitioning from 4-5 to 5-0 because a lot of games are won here by just being more consistent at the kitchen than your opponents. And the kitchen drill really helps you groove those dinks and work on just being able to be a dink machine. It's the same idea as the transition drill, but in this case, it's one up, one up. My favorite way to play this is just head on, but you can also do it cross court. The only problem with the cross courts is that the speed ups and counters and hands battles and stuff are a lot less realistic. So I try to focus on just consistency for going cross court. And if I'm down the line, then, you know, you can be a little more aggressive and practice neutralizing attacks and attacking and all that kind of stuff. What I'd focus on at 4-0 and 4-5 is just lane consistency. 5-0 probably the same, but maybe I'm trying to capitalize more on my opponent's errors and I'm maybe trying to neutralize some of their attacks. And then at 5-5 beyond, uh, you're getting into forcing errors territory, like aggressive dinking, um, creative speed ups, that kind of stuff. And just like the transition drill, the kitchen drill is a lot better with three people. So try that out. Each person is by themselves and you rotate and then uh, you do it on the right side and the left side. Now, I, I wanna call out something about finding drilling partners. It's pretty important if you're really optimizing for your rate of development to be drilling with people that are around your level. And the reason for that is the ball that you're getting is going to be different depending on the level that you're playing at. 
a dink from a pro is going to feel a lot more difficult to dink back than a dink from a 4-5 player. So wherever you're at, you'll, you're going to want to see balls that are more like the balls that you're going to see in games, in the tournaments that you're competing. Some drilling is better than no drilling, but the best drilling is with players around you. The third drill is the groove drill, and this is kind of a catch-all for the type of drilling you'd do if you're collaborating with your partner to just hit a ton of a specific kind of shot. This is grooving volleys and resets. This is grooving dinks. This is grooving fast hands. And here you're not so much competing with your drilling partner as just collaborating with each other to get a lot of touches on some shot that you're working on to build up that muscle memory and feel really comfortable hitting that ball. What I'd focus on at 4.0 is probably drops, but you'd want to do a lot of stuff. At 4.5, still drops. At 5.0, maybe more dinks and kitchen game stuff. And at 5.0 plus, all of the above, plus a lot of emphasis on resets and transition zone, where your drilling partner is giving you a much more difficult ball to hit, like heavy rolls and high-paced volleys. I'm not going to go into too much detail here because Ben Johns made a really great video about his drilling routine with Colin, and that's basically what I copy. So if you're interested in that, go watch that video and just copy exactly what they do. It covers all the bases, and I think it's great. So a typical drill session for me is all of these things kind of in reverse. So um, I'll start off with grooving a bunch of shots to warm up, and then uh, we'll do kitchen drills, and then we'll do transition drills usually with three people. And if we can't find a third person, we'll do it with two people. And then at the end of that, we'll revisit anything that we feel like we want to revisit, whether it's a kitchen or transition drill or just grooving a certain shot. Altogether, this will take about two hours and it, you just feel great after you're done doing it. I started really drilling every week when I was around four or five and getting good 5 plus wherever I'm at now wouldn't be possible without it. So if you're trying to get better and you're not drilling a lot yet, uh, I promise you, if you start working this into your weekly routine, you're gonna get better a lot faster than you're getting better right now. These days, I try to drill twice as much as I play because the time on court is just that much more valuable. So yeah, so go out and try these and let me know what you think. And, and I'll just note that just because I think that these three drills are sufficient and it's the only type of drilling that I do, doesn't mean that other drills can't be useful. It's just, I think that people can get a little bit distracted with the new shiny thing. And this covers all the bases. It's really, really good. It helps you focus on the key skills that you need at each level. And, but feel free to work in whatever you feel like. If you're having fun drilling some other stuff or do it. Uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but if you want the straightest path to improving, this is what I'm doing now. And it's, it seems to be working for you. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll like and subscribe. It helps other great players uh, like you find my stuff. And if there's some kind of video about pickleball that you'd like me to make, some topic you want me to cover, leave a comment.